Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Matt and it is Wild Wednesday. Yes, 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 folks. Happy Hump Day is finally upon us. Uh, before I roll on anything, I want to wish each and every one of you a great morning, evening, dawn, day or dusk, all that lovely stuff because life really is too short as is. Please do me a really huge favor and like, share and subscribe. I love seeing each and every one of you every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, as long as my schedule is permitting and of course, no major holidays. And then one last thing, check out the information in the description box for more info on the daily film such as your brief synopsis your starring cast your director runtime of the cut i am watching along with an mpaa rating if there is one that exists uh some trivia if i find anything worthwhile of mentioning and then either a link for a trailer or a scene from the movie itself now today i, I was able to find you some trivia so there was a little nice little tidbit in there that i thought was worthwhile of mentioning and then um it was really hard to find any kind of trailer for today's film. Uh, I had to, the only thing I could really find was a link for a scene, the opening sequence itself from the movie. So it, do not look for anything like crazy as far as um, the, the uh, trailer goes or anything like that on that end of the, uh, the ass on the, uh, the ass, the ass, uh, uh, that end of the, uh, the, the, the uh, reviews. Now let's go on to uh, all, the movie of the day now that I got all that out of the way. Ah, yes, let's catch the breath. Now this one came out back in 1979. Uh, it has quite the starring cast in it. Um, it has uh, uh, Leandro... Leonora Fani, Jeff Blinn, and Gianni D Di or Dell or whatever it is. I'm not 100%. Uh, I should have done a little bit better on my notes here that I have in my hand. Uh, either way, I got you all the full specs of that in the uh, inf information on the description box. So there is a, a quite the a cast. There is Maria Giandoro, whatever her name is. Uh, uh, Maria Angela Giador Gio Giodornan. <laughs> whatever she is the hot mom from burial ground that has the uh, weird weird son she is also in another mario landi film which is this is today is one of his films it is none other than giallo in venice aka giallo in venice uh i think that's how they say it but either way uh, a magical piece that does have that maria angela giordan who i absolutely love and adore in everything she's in uh this patrick still lives well, like I said, is another Mario Londi film, which I happen to have reviewed uh, months and months and months ago. Definitely check that movie out. That one is a mind blower. It is one of those fake Italian sequels that uh, uh, um, spawned out that they they would that spawned in the 70s, 80s, 90s of, of uh, Italian ex exploitation cinema of the horror cinema, Giallo's, Palacio Techies, uh, things like that. You know, they they definitely uh, did a lot of those fake sequels. Now, this one here is is uh, definitely a giallo or giallo or however you pronounce that gialli. Uh, either way, um, this one definitely it's in the title giallo in Venice, but um, it is one of the most sleaziest uh, giallos I've seen uh, to date. Uh, probably one of the most sleaziest that probably exists because it is definitely one of those. It pushes the boundaries and like say, here's the line. They go speeding past the line, and when they go speeding past the line, they take a, a spit on it, and then they then they keep on going, push that line, push that bar, uh, because there is things in here that I did not uh, uh, see coming. And there are things in here I had not seen in other movies, um, or at least uh, one of the kills that happens in this one. Uh, it is very, very, very gnarly. Uh, granted, the uh, special effects in this are very, very, very dated, and they look a little hokey by nowadays standards, but it is still very, very good movie all in all. Uh, basically, what it is is you, you're opening up to... Um, this sequence of of this man played by uh, uh, Gianni Gianni Dell, I believe it, Day or Die or however his name is pronounced, um, who plays Patrick in the uh, Patrick Still Lives movie uh, that Mario Landi directed. 
Now, he is showing him getting stabbed to death with a pair of scissors. Um, you don't see who our assailant is. Uh, you do see notice that there is another girl there who is who is dead as well. The only difference is, is she has drowned and he has been, been stabbed to death. Um, I would have right away, um, clear-cut case, uh, it was a lover, lovers gone, gone uh, bad type situation. Maybe because I've seen too many any movies but either way we have this hardened police detective who cracks me up entire throughout the entire film he carries around like he's got like dozens of these things everywhere it's there it's like an easter egg hunt with this guy he's got all these like hard-boiled eggs that he is constantly cracking open and peeling off little bits of the shell and the guy's kind of an asshole about it he just throws the shell wherever he wants you know at one point there's an ashtray there and he just kind of tosses it on the floor instead of putting it in the ashtray it's like what a jerk move but either way um he's an interesting hipster type of of detective he's not your normal run-of-the-mill type uh definitely a uh um by the book but it but he beats to he goes to the beat of his own drum in that book as well so he bends bends things here and there um that uh uh blur the lines between police uh policing and um i guess uh flat out like like um being a dick you know i mean the guy the guy is he's supposed to be our hero of the movie honestly i think this police detective is is annoying he's probably the most obnoxious character next to the the husband getting killed at the very beginning which you find out like there's through all the bobs and twists and turns that his yellow has um you find out that uh, um, our main couple that are that are dead at the very beginning are are a very um, experimental uh, couple when it comes to uh, uh, love making and things of that nature. Uh, mostly because the man, um, I'm just going to call him Fake Patrick. Uh, fake Patrick uh, definitely. Um, he, he's a deviant. He is one of those. He likes to push his wife to very far boundaries when it comes to sexual sadism and things of that nature. Um, as a matter like to the point to where he's ha having her have sex with, with other men. Like she's um, opening the door to this um, uh, grocery delivery man in this very, very um, see-through little negligee ordeal and she has him come in and she opens it up for him and and gets all all nice and comfy and while this this dude is just kind of like you could tell it, it blew his mind but either way the uh, husband is off in another room peeking through these through these little cur through this curtain uh blinds type thing uh uh very creepy very nasty dude i would never in a million years make my old lady do things like what he does um and then then you got uh, a whole thing with uh how are they how are all these victims tied together because these these uh people they're they're finding other victims along the way um one is a is uh, our maria giordano uh angelina giordano our, our hot mom from burial ground she has a very interesting death not quite as cool as her death in patrick still lives but still it is a very fun death um, and then you also have there's this prostitute type character that gets off that um uh, you find out that this prostitute character, Maria, and this other fella were all all entangled in a sexual orgy type thing with with our our uh, our um, our leads of this movie. Uh, Flavia is the wife, and then uh, I forget what the husband's name is right now. But either way. Um, they all took place in a very wild orgy. Uh, it was a pretty, pretty uh, funny scene in my opinion because it because of the way they had everybody lined up. It was like like the whole ch the uh, wife was getting a little bit of uh, the uh, back, front door back door action and at the same time, and then um, uh, our Maria and our prostitute are off doing their thing, which I would have rather watched that. Um, but either way, you know. 
call me a call me a jerk or whatnot, but I would have rather watched more of that part. But either way, um, these people that are all involved in this orgy are the ones that are getting offed. Um, and it, and the prostitute has probably the most um, gnarliest death. Uh, in the entire movie itself, um, it is definitely one that will stick through your stick into your mind. It will forever be etched in there. Um, it is one that I, I have I. I've only seen two Mario Landi films and the guy was a uh, the guy in both of the both movies did a. Uh, um, a death there is there is a death between uh, both of those that. Uh, are kind of similar in style where you see a woman's um, nether regions get uh, uh, mutilated horribly bad. Um, in uh, Patrick Still Lives, you see a, a woman get skewered, uh, which is through her through her chotch and it comes out of her mouth. In this one, you see a fellow stab this chick over and over and over again with a pair of shears. Um, it is definitely a, a gruesome scene. And now all the while this is going on, we have our police detective trying to figure out everything that's going on, um, which by the way, eating all these eggs, I imagine he had some of the most rancid egg smelliness farts that ever existed because most human beings, um, when they eat a lot of eggs, they, they produce a smell that is absolutely just rancid and it stings the nostrils. So, um, uh, put two and two together and you got a stinky detective that's a hipster <laughs> but either way um he's slowly but surely picking away at this this case much like his eggs and he is and he is figuring out what's going on um as he as a matter of fact they track down the uh the killer that has gone gone on and and murdered these other people well now this is a completely separate uh uh, uh separate murders with um, a completely different suspect, uh, different MO. Um, he's the one that is offing, he offs Maria, he offs the prostitute, and he offs uh, this other fellow that was part of the uh, the orgy itself. Um, now, when he goes to off off this, when he goes to off off, when he goes to off this fella, um, it's quite a uh, disturbing uh, uh kind of death because you notice that he is still alive at the end of it he gets shot multiple times he is unable to move he's basically rendered uh, um kind of a handicapped type uh thing i uh, shot him in the legs and and stuff like that but either way our killer comes up and he dumps proceeds to dump a gallon of gasoline all over this man lights him on fire runs off gets shot by a security guard which blew my mind that uh in this this little place there's the security guard carried a carried a heater on him and and he straight up just pop 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 he got one one sh one shot off that or one that actually hit uh which is the way that the police are able to tie this fellow into the into the murder of the the, the other three which they are accusing him of all five in total um he folds under under their police investigation and, and admits to the three um you later find out more about uh, uh, Flavia and her husband, the architect, um, what kind of a, a deviant this man is. He takes her to this, um, the final, the final hoorah is he takes her to this um, island to go shop in and look for things for their new flat. Um, she talks him into going to see a doctor because he is he's about to force her to go have sex with for money with the this this man uh which in turns to be two two guys show up instead um they take advantage of her very roughly uh um while the husband is off in in oh, quite a ways away watching and you can tell there is some disgust in his face of what has he done to his wife um it quickly goes away though, because once she is able to collect herself and she's a they're able to be reconnected again in that scene, 
there is a lot of hostility from Flavia, which I don't blame her. I would have wanted to kill the fool himself, uh, myself, but either way, um, he starts to basically rape her right there on the on the on the banks of the the Venice shoreline. Um, she quickly uh, takes care of the situation, and as she is as things are going on, you find out how she dies as well, which is a very, very weird ending in my opinion. Uh, you get to see the very, the, you start with the, the end and you end with the end. It, it, you know, they at least tied up all strings in between, which is a, which is good for a giallo because there, I, there are some very sloppy giallos out there where they don't tie up all the strings. And this one they actually do. There's no giant plot gaps or anything like that. Uh, the acting is, is crisp you know it, it, it is as good as it's going to get for an Italian giallo um, I think probably one of the greatest performances I've ever seen in an Italian giallo probably belongs to Carl Malden in Cat Nine Tales he plays a blind character who is absolutely astonishing as a as as one of the uh, actors and in, in all these giallo films that I've seen um, I would I would give my my hat off for for him as being one of the greatest actors that it when it came to a Jalo. Otherwise, you were stuck with these, uh, I would say, mid-card actors. Uh, uh, never really anybody that I would say jumped up on that A level. There was very close people, you know, that is very sure. Now, as any kind of ratings I would go on the one through five scale, I'm going to give this thing a three and a half out of five. It could have been a borderline four. Um, the only thing, my only real beef is, is the sex stuff got way repetitive. Um, how much can one person really put up with uh, before they say, see you later, I'm, I'm done with this crap? Uh, I honestly, I just, I can't wrap my mind around it interesting stuff though i definitely say check this out this is the uh by the way this is a code red uh blu-ray release uh it's the only way i know that this one is available or at least uh in print right now you can get it over at diabolic dvd yes folks diabolic dvd they they at least last i knew they still had um copies of this in in uh, uh print and in stock so definitely pop on over and check this bastard out it is worthwhile all right guys i love all of your faces i'm gonna get the hell out of here i got things to do i'll see you on friday with another gem um i'm not 100 percent what i'm gonna do as usual but either way i'm gonna bring you something that i hope you all love and and uh will uh enjoy the, uh, to be entertained from beginning to end Oh yeah, and I forgot to say...